Good morning. Bom dia a todos, todas. Um, today I will present uh, the history of science and culture, discussing local question and science teacher. Before to begin my presentation, I want to point out that all the tools concerning history of science and science teaching that I will present and discuss here were constructed together with the NIEC. NIEC is an acronym group, uh, Portuguese, that's meaning Research Group on Teaching History of Science and Culture. And in this conference, uh, are attending this conference, I, Tânia Camel, and Wagner Jardim. So, they are, uh, okay? Yes, I'm not an artist. <laughs> <laughs> and so all things you, you could ask for me and for both Tânia and uh, Wagner. So to discuss these issues, I divided this presentation in five parts. The first one, in the introduction, I will present who you are, then some discussion about science teaching because I think it's very important to guide the second, the third and the fourth part of the presentation. Then we're going to discuss our theoretical approach, cultural history of science, and we'll bring three examples that we will develop in science uh, class using this theoretical approach. And to the end, some final remarks. So, the NIEC is hosted in Cefet RJ. Yes, this is a technology institution in Rio de Janeiro. The research problems and the theoretical approach of our studies are construction for our backgrounds and the school social cultural context where we teach science. <clears throat> so, we develop Theoretical and empirical studies. It's important because you have to post. The empirical studies developed in our class aim to create paths to improve science teaching in a historical, philosophical, sociological approach. It's important to point out that we are not looking for a universal way to teach science in historical, philosophical, and sociological approach. Our theme is constituted by research teachers of physics, chemistry, and biology. Some of us teach in basic education and others in graduate, undergraduate and graduate course. Some of us are taking PhD in science, technology, and education. This is the name of a graduate program in CEFET RJ and attending the group meetings and develop research in science class. Others are taking the master degree in the same program. And some of us have already graduated and continue to develop research in science education, attend the group meeting and develop research in science class. Um, we have meeting one a week, yes, during all day. In the first part of the day, we discuss history of science, study history of science and uh, historiographical and discuss the thing. And the second part in the afternoon, you discuss our research empirical studies, okay? So all empirical studies are discussed together with the group. The results, the analyze the results, not all the results, but uh, the most of the results together with us. So we'll develop our empirical research in Brazilian, in nowadays, public schools. In the school that inspires, uh, the schools that inspire our work and give us data for think about science class, there are students from different cultural and socioeconomical backgrounds. They live in, in a country and in, in a city with a very high socioeconomic and cultural inequality. And democracy, in real sense, is something urgent in our society. 
So for us, the first question to be considered is why should we teach in science in basic education? Okay, um, because in undergraduate course you uh, work with uh, teaching training, so this is the most important question for us. Uh, to answer this question, it's important to highlight that the Brazilian public schools, MBNs, are plural. The students' religion, gender, and cultural heritage are diverse. So we are good that if science education aims to be representative in this context, it's necessary to consider this diversity. This consideration led us to argue that the following tools are very important for science education. First, the science cannot be presented as an unquestionable and authoritative knowledge. To put this authoritative in question, it's important to discuss how science was developed through the history. Besides this, it's necessary to problematize why the Brazilian students rarely find Brazilian names in their science textbooks. The few presence of women and Afro-descendants in scientific production throughout history also have to be pro problematized. And it's important to discuss the dialogue between science and the other forms of knowledge. Considering the importance of science in the contemporary world, we understand the previous question has a motivation to develop a science education that promotes, understands about the development of science throughout the history and the limits and possibilities of scientific knowledge. In this way, we argue that it is important to find paths to discuss science as culture. But on some of our previous studies, this proposal showed to be a challenge. How could we discuss science as culture without bringing a relativistic perspective to our class? How could we discuss science as culture without putting culture as a mere scenario? So these two questions guide our work since 2014, okay? And looking for paths to promote science education that could achieve the objective described previously, we consider the results of the studies that indicate that a historical, philosophical, sociological approach could be a good way to promote discussion about science. I know that it is obvious for this audience, but it's important that um, this question and this scenario of our school uh, not uh, put for us that is very important, this approach. Yes, you have a problem of time, you have a problem of uh, uh, teacher information, but for us, this is very important. So this is a political choice, okay? So this consideration led us to a question. What could be a historiographical approach to inform the development and implementation of science teaching that aims to improve the discussion about science in a way that allows students to ask a question that could create opportunity to discuss the issues highlighted previously. So, looking for possibility, we develop a theoretical study. In this theoretical study, you become to to looking for historiographical studies. So. You study uh, different uh, historians of science discussing this the historiographical approach. And in this way, you find cultural history of science, okay? This is a historiographic approach based on new cultural history. New cultural history, it's a historiographic approach for general history that uh, when we discuss history, looking for the practices, scientific, well, the practices, the the, more, the manner that uh, the, the people uh, um, behave in society. In the case of uh, cultural history science, the emphasis being on everyday scientific practice, scientific representation, material, and visual culture.
So the historical studies developed from this approach consider the dynamic process of scientific development and the emphasis on the process of this development. The cultural history of science deny a normative structure to describe how science was constructed throughout history. Science in such a way is understood as a local and temporal enterprise, and the scientific practices are considered historical, local, temporal, and contingent. Uh, this historical, uh, historiographic approach considers that scientific everyday work is important for understand of the process of science construction. But as the historical studies focus on scientific practice, the works developed by other person than scientists appear on scientific production. I put here only few uh, historians of science that uh, develop work in this historiographic approach. Before continuing, it's important to highlight some consideration about the scientific practice from this approach. First, it's not possible to construct a definitive description about what is scientific practice. They are historical, so they change throughout history. Their meaning are produced and validated by the scientific community. There are concrete actions that are articulated with the consolidated meaning producing new meanings. So, only to summarize, scientific practice includes, obvious, perform specific from science, experimental and not experimental. But includes also activities not science exclusively, like reading, writing, debating, questioning, financial support, research network, research groups, conference, scientific communication, and cultural performance and activities from the culture and society where the, the, uh, the scientific knowledge study was developed. And it's important that this cultural performance and activity sometimes does not have men and other culture. With this approach, it's possible to uh, highlight the participation of actors. I put here new actors, but it's not scientists necessary, and cities in production of science. So, after this brief description, now I will present uh, the three examples. Yes, uh, they were developed in different schools, and all the teacher is part of uh, NIEC, yes. And uh, this is the, the photo, it will be uh, in the presentation later. Uh, the first one was developed in a school situation in a poor neighborhood in Rio de Janeiro. The most of the students is Afro-descendant. There is a port close to this school from where the Africans arrived in Rio de Janeiro in 18th, 19th century from uh, of a slavery condition. <coughs> this school is very small, without good installation and extra tour. In the class, there were 29 students, 17 of them were girls and 12 boys. They were between uh, 13 to 15 years old, and, and the didactic sequence was developed in an eighth grade science class. And of most of the students present difficulties on reading and writing. Uh, the teacher, it's important, this is the teacher, uh, she is developed uh, research in history of science and science teaching since uh, 2013, yes. She studied in this school when she, is, she was young. She lived in this, nowadays, she lives in this neighborhood and she is taking his PhD uh, in Cefet with us. So, we work in this school since 2014, developing this kind of work, but uh, I bring only one example, because this is a, a, the first example that we will uh, develop with this historiographical approach in mind. Uh, 
uh, the teaching theme in this class was the develop of study of the human board in Europe during the birth of modern science. Okay? Uh, the mandatory curriculum during this class that the teacher has to discuss is circulatory system, identify the structure that made part of circulation of the blood and its function, issues related to individual and collective health link to systemic circulation. Um, it's important that uh, you use many uh, paintings during the class, and all paints that I put in this slide was used in class, sometimes in activities developed in group, sometimes when teachers are explaining something. So, and I, I'm not going to describe the, the paintings, I only put this and talk, because I don't have time to do the, the both. I don't have time now. You have more than time, but it's a choice, okay? <laughs> it's not a problem of time. So, <clears throat> the teacher developed activities from painting, producing the periodic studies. Shield paints from Rembrandt, Vermeer. Oh, this is, oh, so this is a, a paint for two more from Rembrandt. It's very dark, I don't know what. Sorry. <laughs> yes? Uh, the, the, the teacher also used the scientific image, image of the period. All the activities were developed to promote the discussion of the students about the paintings. Based on the analysis of the data of these activities, the teacher addressed in science class issues about the development of the study of the human board in that sociocultural Contest highlights the scientific practice, the social actors, visual and material culture involved in the process. So uh, sometimes this school don't have a, a data show, but uh, it's not easy to choose. So you put the image, in, print the image, and then sometimes you develop uh, activities with the study, give for them an image. And, to discuss what we're seeing, what they think about this, and after that, in group, you discuss about the historical uh, issues that you want. In the beginning of the course, the teacher discussed ARB expansion. In this discussion, the teacher presents some artifacts, anatomy studies, medical procedures developed by Arabs and brought by them to Europe during Arab expansion. In the discussion of the birth of modern science, the teacher highlighted the travel across the ocean, discussing the neology, vegetable, plants, animals, and people that European met. So, uh, for us, you discussed that the enlargement of the horizons was the central theme of this part of the group, of the course. The teacher also discussed the importance of the everyday practice in the development of science. The dissection in the 16th and 17th century is a scientific practice discussed by teacher. So she discussed with the students where, who, and how this practice was developed. Uh, so she discussed that this is a social event also, and this is an anatomy theater that will show the students, and discussed that uh, in this, the people occupy the place according to the socio-economic condition, okay? Uh, the other practice highlight was the use of the lens. The teacher discussed that this artifact was used in science, but also in art and in commerce. During the didactic se sequence, the teacher discussed different social actors involved in the practice around the study of the human board such as the butcher, barber, and midwife. For example, uh, she discussed uh, so much with the student who uh, works with uh, William Harvey, developed by William Harvey, and uh, he, used, uh, he used some knowledge developed by butcher in the section in, this, in his work. And she discussed this with these students. Now, now again, the same things, sorry, Yes, uh, I'm going to briefly describe some results that you find or you analyze in this uh, uh, example. 
during the activities where the painting two words was presented. The student put in question the Afro-descendant participation in production of science. They made the question to the teacher about the absence of this social group in the study of the human body in the 18th and 17th century. Uh, the everyday practice of the middle wife called the student's attention. Um, especially the girls made many questions about uh, where are the women, uh, uh, how, uh, what the activity they develop in this period in that context, and uh, bring some uh, consideration about uh, uh, their the activities that uh, they develop, because uh, in poor neighborhoods where they live, it's very common that the girls stay in home after school with her brother, sister, younger. So she, it's very nice. I know that is not a historical uh, situation, but for us it's very important because we bring some uh, everyday practice for them. Yes, that's very important for them and for women condition to classroom, to the classroom. From the discussion about the arbor science in the Middle Ages, the student asked many questions about the knowledge constructed by other cultures about the human body. The theme is more highlighted by students, specifically the girls, were the open of the human body and the arbor cesarean practice. They seem disturbed by the consequence of this practice, such as the health of the human and the possibility of the death of the women who had the cesarean. For us, yes, there is, these results suggest that in the class, the student made question, question not explicitly present in the historical narrative developed by the teacher, such as the Afro-descendant participation in science and in Brazilian society, and the works developed by women linked to their life as well. Now, I will present a second example, okay? Uh, this is, is an example that was developed in a woman prison. In Brazil, the woman prison, some of the woman prison have a school inside the woman prison that the prisoners could have class when they are in prison. Okay? Uh, and this example was developed with six, uh, five adult women of various ages. The youngest uh, is 20, around 25 years old, and the oldest one, 45 years old, okay? The school is not obligatory for them. They could attend the class when they wanted. And, but uh, these five girls uh, attend all the the class, yes, because some class have to be considered because have a problem with light, have a problem with security, but uh, the class. And the project was developed along 22 hours distributed in two months. Um, it's important to point out that those women are in prison because they are, were involved in drug trafficking, all of them, influenced by their husband or boyfriend. The majority had children when they were teenagers. Another important thing is about the teacher. The teacher is a human rights activist. Yes, very activist. And a feminist. She has four children. Yes, this teacher. And when she comes to, uh, are taking, were taking, was taking her master's degree, he brought these two questions for our group. Né? Uh, what is the motivation to study science while in being prison? How could, you, could science education connect to their life? So, uh, this discussion and discussion about what are developing the group led us to choose as a central point to the didactic sequence the discussion of the participation of females in the science production. And um, because of the work that was developed in history of science, she 
uh, tools, uh, chose to work with botany, the development of botany in 18th century and the early of 19th century. And uh, this was developed focus in women uh, activists developed during uh, 18th century in botany, okay? And botany is part of the official curriculum. It's important to point out that the official curriculum in this kind of school is something very um, strange because uh, don't have exam, don't have, uh, yes, so. <coughs> Uh, but uh, why you choose this team? Then you consider this team has, has a good opportunity to put in question the participation of women in science and society. Based on this consideration, the questions that guide the historiographical cultural approach were: Who were those women? Where did they live? What kind of scientific practice did they develop? What were their social class. Uh, as in the first example, this, the image that I put in, in this slide, uh, all of them were used during this class. Okay? So the teacher used paint from the historical period of study to develop the didactic sequence. And the science class was div divided in, were divided in three teams. The first one was enlightenment and the feminine education. <clears throat> uh, to develop this team, the teacher discussed with the students the views about women discussed by Kant, Rousseau, Hume, and Condorcet. It's important to point out that these philosophers did not have the same view about women. The first two considered that women and men uh, were nature different. For example, for them, the women are not capable to develop activities that need abstract thought. Condorcet, on, on the other hand, denied the nature difference between male and female. From these and other pants, the teacher discussed the female activities developed by women in the domestic space. The second theme was botany scientific practice. In this case, the teacher discusses such scientific practice, the dissection, the collection of species, the exploration travels, collect plants from different places, the illustration, the writing, reading of letters, and the books published. She highlights also that there were amateurs involved in this practice and that botany teaching was part of the female education in the Enlightenment. Another tool discussed is, the, is that some botany scientific practice were developed in the domestic space, and this contributed to make this practice common for a group of women. The teacher highlighted that in that historical context, the human participated in the botany scientific practice, and that there were books written for women and others written by women. Some of them are written by women to women. Okay? So she discussed and brings some of uh, extracts of this book. The third theme was linear classification system. The teacher developed activity with plants. Uh, she brought these two plants to the classroom because the students know it's very common in Rio de Janeiro. Take them in the garden in front of the prison. In front, yes, in front of. So the teacher developed activities with plants to discuss the linear classification system. She brought to the class these plants and used lens to analyze them. The teacher also discussed the controversy around this system and asked the students to draw the plants observed in class. From this activity of draw, uh, she discussed the importance of uh, some abilities and learning these abilities to develop practice of illustration. So you're discussing about the, the importance that you, if you want to develop uh, to be a scientist, there will be some abilities that is important in some context, okay? Or to be a scientist is or not. 
So to summarize, when teaching about botany and its history, the teacher explicitly addressed questions about women's presence in this specific field and the characteristic of women education in the 18th century. For the first time in her practice as teacher in prison, she felt closer connection with the history of her students. For discursive activities, it was possible to note that students raised many connections between their own lives and the thoughts of the Enlightenment philosophers and the trajectory of women in science. Uh, the third example was developed in a vocational school in Rio de Janeiro in the 12th grade. It's important that this vocational uh, school, it's a vocational school, yes, but uh, the students um, don't want to be a technician. They want to be an engineer, they want to be a scientist, and um, most of them, in this case, are interested to be a scientist, yes, because uh, in Brazil, this vocational school don't, uh, it's, it's not, uh, not close to, to, to go to a university. It's opposite, yes, it's a federal school. In the class, in this class, there were 30 students. They were around 17 years old. And uh, in this school, there were students from different Rio de Janeiro neighborhoods. Most of them live far from the school and they had different socioeconomic backgrounds. Uh, the historical approach contemplates the studies of the electricity developed in 18 and in the early of 19th century. In special discussions surround the construction of line the jar and volta pile. The characteristic of this school and these students, students led us to develop a didactic sequence in a way to allow teacher to discuss uh, contemporary scientific practice. The teacher is a PhD student also. Uh, he works with uh, science education and the history of science and develop research in history of science since 2011, okay? Yes, and uh, so, uh, and this, during this class, I'm finishing. Okay, uh, there are, uh, there were uh, there was another um, teacher that have the same um, information. It's interesting in history of science and science education also. Okay. <coughs> so. Uh, in this didactic sequence, the teacher used the historical instrument and experiment to discuss the historical episode and the physics content. But now, oh, today, I will only highlight the, highlight the scientific practice discussed in the science classes. In the discussion of Leidger and Volta Pyle, the scientific practice discussed were the experimental physics class and the role of the Leiden universe in the first part of the 18th century. The dynamic of the information exchange among scientists through letters and the central spots of knowledge production called Republic of Letters and the role of scientific academies in the 18th century. Well, based on this discussion, the teacher developed an activity with this guy, Arto Avila, Arto Avila won Fields Medal in 2014. He is from Rio de Janeiro. He lives in Rio de Janeiro. And um, we are discussing with, him, uh, with the students where he studied when he was young. Yes, the high school, the undergraduate course, the graduate course, where he works nowadays because he stayed half of a year in Rio de Janeiro working in IMPA. IMPA is a mathematical institu uh, institution in Rio de Janeiro for poor mathematics. And uh, it's not a university. So this, the research, the people who 
work there don't have the same activity that a teacher in university. And the other part of the year, he works in France. Okay? So we'll discuss uh, the international exchange, the import importance of this, when, where he published his work, and something like that. And the discussion around the construction of a Volta pile showed to be a good opportunity to discuss the role of uh, periodical publication. For example, the teacher could highlight that the publication of Volta pile first in the modern chronicles, and this public publication uh, occurred before the official presentation in the Royal Society, contributed to the replication of the pile. And um, after this historical discussion, the teacher developed an activity that they put some uh, Brazilian scientist uh, name and asked the students to go to the Google and uh, make a brief research with this name to find where these people publish and discuss what this published, the importance of this published, the, the importance that it, the published be in English, and that some of them are paid. You have to pay to, to receive. And discuss also our program, government program, that when you are in university or official institute of science in Brazil, you could have some uh, journals free because the government made an assignment with some editors. So we'll discuss this situation nowadays and uh, after the historical discussion. From the activity with the historical instruments and experiment, the teacher discussed the role of experimentation and the replication of an apparatus and the experiment. From this, the teacher discussed contemporary cases, such as the experiment developed in the CERN. And uh, in this case, she uh, he highlighted that some of these experiments could not be replicated as the experiment developed with uh, Leiden jar and Volta pile because the, the difference of structure, the money involved in the effort. Okay. The scientific findings was another issue discussing during the class. This discussion showed to be a good opportunity to discuss the current Brazilian scientific fund situation. Yes? And uh, you use this because this uh, sequence was developed this year, in the beginning of this year. And in Brazil, nowadays, we have a terrible situation about uh, financial support. And we discussed with the, uh, with the students that to be a scientist, it's, it's necessary to, be, I want to be a scientist, yes, it's good, but have a, another uh, structural situation that is important. And we use this moment to discuss this. I'm finished, I promise, it's the last two one, okay? Um, so I'm going to read, because <coughs> Oh, some final consideration that I want to put in discussion. The science teaching from cultural historical approach seems to allow the teachers to bring to the science class actors, actors also, that participate in the study of science who were not initially recognized by students as science producers. The results suggest that cultural history of science approach could be a path to promote discussion about science in science classroom consider the specificity of the school. I'm not reading this question to put this because this is the question that uh, guided our first research uh, study about what historiographic approach we could use. And uh, I think this uh, project that we are developing, so don't finish the problem. And the problem was in our mind, okay? Thank you very much. Muito obrigada.
Thank you, Andrea. Um, uh, it's nice to know that you are doing so many. You are doing so many different um, initiatives in different kind of schools, and uh, this prison school is fantastic to to, to hear about it. And uh, so I'm sure that this is a kind of great uh, uh, research that we need to do and. Uh, and comparing different uh, school cultures. Uh, but th the only um, specific question I would like to make you is, uh, did you use any uh, method uh, from, the, uh, uh, from science education to, uh, to collect data and, uh, yeah, and which one was that? And, in school, it's not possible to record anything, to, to take any photos because it's uh, because of the security of the teacher. Yes, if you bring someone, right? So there, you develop an ethnographical approach, and you have a diary, a camp diary. But from the others, you are using um, a linguistic back team. Yes to analyze the writing and uh, it's developed from the teacher, yes. Uh, so it's another thing that you are discussing. And uh, because what do you do? You collect the data from record, we record the, all the class. And uh, the writing that the uh, student uh, produce during the activities, you analyze from this approach. And uh, you are now developing some interview at the end of the process, and sometime, some month, you choose some a group of, not choose, it's uh, arbitrary, five, seven, eight students, and develop an interview with them to analyze better the data. Yes, the 31 was not used by team. It was the uh, Rock uh, or ATD. Um, oh this is a, you know, it's a, a kind of uh, approach of uh, discursive speech, similar to category analysis. Yes, but it's not, you don't like it. It's very structured, you don't have time to analyze it. Yes, but the other use it is. Okay? Our group is very big, it is good. Yes? <laughs> it's, I have a difficult, but I have a good. We have different uh, expertise. In our Andrea, I like very much the cultural approach and uh, even more the idea of including um, Afro descendants culture and uh, local culture. And uh, with this, uh, considering that we are in Brazil, I think I wonder when you showed the images, for instance, of uh, Arabs uh, giving birth or things like that. I wonder if oh, she could have used indigenous people giving birth and images like that. And um, also regarding the Afro descendants and the the, pre the I, it's a coincidence because I, I I'm quite uh, um, interested in this education in prisons. But I've never thought about female educa female prisoners. I was have been reading about male prisoners and how the education in prisons work and things like that. But of course, I should le look for women <laughs> prisoners clearly. So thank you for <laughs> call uh, for lighting this. Uh, and um, in this context, uh, I think it could be nice for you to use images of uh, Brazilian painters painting uh, Brazilian women in everyday life. There is a, um, her name is um, Abigail de Andrade. She has a famous painting about women putting cloth in line outside. And there is, there are images from several Brazilian painters um, uh, portraying everyday situations with women in certain roles and uh, also uh, and since you are working with women in prison and I quite sure that the majority of them is uh, Afro is uh, yeah they are black so it's it could be nice to show images of the Bre 
for them to understand uh, their past in order to make sense of the, the present situation. So instead of showing uh, rich ladies in the enlightenment, uh, that we didn't have an enlightenment here, and I wonder if we'll have something similar one day. And uh, I think it could be nicer to show uh, pictures related to our uh, reality. This is a choice from this uh, student. Yes, Yamini is a very interesting woman because uh, she is an activist, and for her, it's very important to bring this picture for enlightenment because she said it's more important that to say, "Oh, you could," it's to understand why you're not good. <laughs> yes, because I said these women in Brazil have uh, not the situation at the same time, but. Uh, have condition to study, have condition, yes? So the condition of these women in prison is, are very different. So uh, for uh, Yemeni, we'll discuss this, yes? We'll discuss what? Can we gotta have another work that we have used the Bre, yes, that's very important. She bring one, but she wants to discuss this situation. That's true, because uh, for her, it's very interesting, they said. Uh, I want that the, this woman put in question that uh, my condition it's not uh, a condition uh, a special uh, condition that oh I could be different if I want it's a, a socio-economic condition that led me to this way and um, so I'm going to discuss that some women have another condition that's why we're black in here yes and uh, so she think that this is important and she worked in this school since 2000 i'm not sure but i think five years ago 2013 and the first the first time that she developed something in historical science with them yes now we we'll bring another about the indigenous you are discussing this in our group but you have so few information historical case in this case, in this situation, okay? So, uh, you, uh, you think, well, you have some names, but uh, sometimes we should bring some names, but could be idea, oh, he could, so I could. So we want to disturb this, okay? But it's something that we are in process. We have many questions. I think they will have more questions than answer, okay? But uh, it's something that we are put all together to think. Uh, but don't have an answer. I have a, so it's good idea to the brain use, but the other and to put this. It's very interesting working with this woman. This teacher began to work in a Mayo prison, and she said it's impossible, impossible. I am a female, and teaching for Mayo. So she decided to <laughs> change. I want to work with women, and so. Thank you, Andrea. It was very interesting. I was thinking on the on Sibeli's question that uh, it's interesting for them also to see that rich white women were women nonetheless, and they were oppressed in another sense. And you mentioned a few philosophers. I wondered if you, if you can, and if you consider the possibility of joining teams with a philosophy teacher and doing something together about these philosophers and this enlightenment period fantastic yes uh, in this school you don't have this opportunity uh, no I, I think it may be I, but i uh, don't know if you have a, a philosopher teacher there because it's a very different school because some some teacher don't want to to stay there because it's not easy Yes, sometimes you don't have light, sometimes becomes some fight in, in the prison. So to be a teacher in this school has to be a political choice. I want to be a teacher. But it's something very interesting. I think you can develop, yes? It's the first time that you do in this kind of school. I know someone in UFR Jota that I will give you the analysis. Okay.
Okay, I know we have more questions, but we little later. So we pass for the f next conference, and we thanks the professor. <laughs>